So I had done a project called The American Nurse six years ago. It started with a book and a film. Um, it's a, it started off as like a coffee table book to, to dive into the world of nurses, but I was looking at issues in America that we're all dealing with through the lens of a nurse. So I looked at poverty and returning war veterans and aging, and I went across America talking to nurses about all the things that we're dealing with in this country. And one of the conversations that came up that they talked about us tackling was that we're not dying very well. And I couldn't just leave that alone. Um, I wanted to really dig in. So I spent another year talking to nurses who were only working at end of life, and then selected these nurses to follow into their worlds and meet their patients. And we tried to, um, I guess in a nutshell, give a little power back so that people could understand that we have agency over the way that we die, and we do have choices to make, and we need to become more aware of that, um, and then bring our families on board to understand what we want. So that was the goal. So, I mean, I started the American, I've, I've spent six years in this world, um, but the, just for the end of life part of this, I spent a year doing the research and then a year um, filming and also volunteering at a hospice. So I'm going to turn this over to Siobhan first, and uh, if you can. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. I'm Siobhan Green, and I'm the CEO for Hospice Giving Foundation, which is a local foundation that funds and supports many different agencies that provide end-of-life care. We fund programs that run a real spectrum from um, support for families in the early days of an illness all the way through to hospice care and then the grief and bereavement work that comes after the loss of somebody you love. And I would just like to say thank you to Caroline for bringing this film here and for giving us this incredible opportunity to, to, to look at something so very personal as an end of life journey. And we're not looking at fiction, we're looking at these real people who allowed her to come into their lives and to share their story. And we're hoping that this inspires many of you to share your story and to begin to talk about the things that, that you want and that are meaningful. Um, I'd like to kind of give you all a little prompt right now to think about the person you came here with, and many of us come to these things alone, so maybe somebody who you're thinking about. And if you came here with somebody important and special and really wonderful to you, if you take a, a second and look at them and wonder, do you know? Do you know what they want? Do you know how you can honor what they want? And if you don't, how do you begin that conversation? That is one of the things we're really here to encourage, is that incredibly meaningful conversation that we all have to have so that we can be sure our wishes are honored, even when somebody wants us to go to the hospital and he says, I'm staying home, because he was pretty clear about that. Um, so let me turn it over and have you meet Joy. My name is Joy Smith. I'm a registered nurse and very proud to be one, actually. Um, I have lived and worked in this community for a very long time, providing oncology care in a variety of settings. And I'm here representing a nonprofit that we founded five years ago. It's called Papillon Center for Loss and Transition. We provide bereavement services uh, to uh, special groups of people. We 
provide bereavement services to adults, to children, to people who have lost an animal companion or a pet, and to folks, families who have lost either a pregnancy due to stillbirth or miscarriage. Grief is something that we often don't give a voice to, just like we don't give a voice to our end of life issues as well. So the work that we do while we are alive around these very important issues not only help ourselves, they are truly a gift to the people that survive us. And in our thinking at Papillon, um, if we can do more and more of this, our overall goal really is to build healthier communities because I think that people who grieve in a more healthy way are healthier individuals. And that's what we want for our communities. It's certainly what I want for my family. So we're here to support this wonderful film that gives uh, a really wonderful and somewhat funny and bittersweet and uh, very realistic look at uh, what we all have, what the possibilities are for all of us. Thank you. Um, you know, I just want to say that when I started this, uh, I didn't expect that I would end up really focused on what makes life worth living, but all of this conversation that we're talking about, it's not just about death, actually, you know, my whole life has been transformed by working on this film because I started focusing on what makes life worth living. And that's a very productive, wonderful place to go, whether you're close to the end of life or not. So I'm a huge advocate of no matter what age you are, going through some of the processes that I've seen that, you know, these these wonderful tools that you have to help people go through the process of figuring out what makes life worth living. It's a, it's a wonderful journey to take. Um, and it has prepared me for so much, not the least of which was the death of my own par parents last year. So I'm highly motivated because of working this project and how much it helped me get through my parents' death that, uh, that I share this with as many people as possible. So thank you for coming. I know you were, it was like Denzel Washington or us, right? What the heck? And you can't and the beach party, I know. <laughs> I couldn't agree more, and, and I've been that same journey. A really awful experience with nobody helping, nobody telling us, nobody sharing what we needed to know. So one of the things that I know Carolyn is working on is trying to find a, an avenue for this to be available for more community education and programs. Um, while she's also doing that at the foundation, we also provide a lot of educational programs and programs for people in the community as well as professionals so that you can start to plan and have those conversations so that it isn't such a terribly, terribly painful experience. Um, you know, I think we've, we've, we've sort of removed the concept of looking at what does define joy or hope at the end of life, and it is there. It is there. We, we sort of just rush to the pain and we rush to the sadness, but if we can really look at understanding what somebody we love wants and we can really spend time in a meaningful conversation, there is joy. There is joy to be seen at that point in time because you can celebrate somebody who has had a good life and has been a part of your life and will always be a part of your life. And um, you can honor their wishes by knowing how to honor their wishes and by having that conversation. Is there a vehicle that could make the Pulse forms more accessible? Accessible, like, can you explain, like, easier to fill out or harder? No, to, to get. To so get people home. can have them. Yes, so, um, yeah. Do you have them? No. We, have them. Yeah. we have them for you on our website. What is that website? That website, yes, hospicegiving.org, good question from the heckler in the audience. <laughs> 
Not yet. We know that's coming. But actually, yes, you can get the you can get the Pulse online from California Pulse straight from there, but we also give you a link from our website, from hospicegiving.org. We also have a number of other tools. We have a really cool planning tool called Notes to My Family. It's comprehensive, it's very detailed, and it's completely free to anyone who wants to go online and download it. We also have some basic tip sheets with language and terms that people don't understand and suddenly you're faced with trying to deal with a loved one with a really, really serious illness and how many of you are going online at 10 o'clock at night trying to figure out what do I do next? I mean, seriously, how many of you have been that route, right? We do that. We try to find some resources. You can go directly to our site and you can find a lot of them there. Um, the other thing is the advanced care directives. Um, you know, everybody needs to fill out an advanced care directive, but it's a lot more than just checking a box. It's really about having a conversation and knowing what those directives mean. We offer workshops. Um, I'm not sure if many of you know Sherry Farr. Probably lots of you do. She's a wonderful, wonderful woman who does transition planning for families. And we offer free workshops for people in the community to come and meet with her for a couple hours, twice in two sessions and get that work done in a meaningful and well thought out process. So we are trying to give you lots of resources and, and it's one of those things that this kind of film helps us open that dialogue up and we're so grateful for it because otherwise what ends up happening is we only are facing this when we're in the moment of the crisis and that's not where we want to be. So um, I can give you a couple of other resources as well for the Pulse form. Um, Community Hospital is offering workshops once or twice a month where we walk people through the process of their health care decision making. Pulse forms are available there for free and they're also available in the Health Resource Library at Community Hospital. So there's a couple of other resources for you as well. Other questions? Well, great. Thank you all so much for coming tonight and thank you both, Joy and Siobhan, for being here. I think all the richness is there and lots of information. And you don't have to be at the end of life to go down this path. You shouldn't. It's, it's a really rich experience to do it now and to think about it. I, I, my whole life has been enriched by taking this journey. So, um, so I urge you all to do it. So again, thank you very much.